comprehensive belting in the end, and it was a belting. 69 points the margin, 35 at half time. Got it out to 44 and finished strongly, 69 points. And there's good news stories everywhere. John Brown and Nathan Buck and Jordan Lewis on the back of a, a disappointing loss last week against Melbourne, where all the numbers suggest that they should have perhaps gone better. They've bounced back in emphatic style. Yeah, they dominated territory after quarter time, Gaz. 52 to uh, 27 was inside 50. Count was on the back of the clearance domination, centre bounce domination, which the boys will get into a little bit further. But I was really impressed and equally as disappointed by Essendon tonight. You know, especially uh, what they showed in that first quarter, Gaz. So, Brad Scott, back to the drawing board. Yeah, I, th I thought it was a meritorious win for Port, given you know, what their opposition dished up in the first quarter. Yeah, you know, Essendon were great early. Uh, but, but after quarter time, they, they completely disappeared. There was there was no grunt through the middle. Yeah, they weren't able to, when they weren't able to move the ball at will, and we saw that in the first 35 minutes. As soon as that was closed down, it was like they, they didn't have any second you know, second game plan or second option, and they just they really diminished after that. And Port Adelaide totally dominated. It was interesting um, pitches post game of the Essendon coaching box, Geordie. I'm not sure whether you saw it. Uh, the siren sounded, yeah. and. Uh, no, deep in discussion there, and I think, yeah, you know, I think Brad Scott's got a really good perspective. I always think he has, but I think this would have shocked him a bit. I, I think they thought they were a little bit further advanced than that, and on the back of it, I, th I agree with Brownie. I think they rolled over far too easily. Yeah. And it's taking nothing away from Port Adelaide, who were absolutely superb, yeah. but I think they rolled over too easily. Yeah, we see David Rath in there as well. Uh, I, I think Bucks is right, and you're also right, Brownie. I, they just didn't have anything to go to. So, so once. Mm. Once their, their game plan or their, or their one wood was taken away, you, you're looking for different modes of moving the ball or different ways to combat the stoppage dominance that Port Adelaide was showing, but they, but they didn't. And it, and it just looked like they were deflated. And then, S, uh, then Port Adelaide really just preyed on that and, and, and away they went. So that's, that's the disappointing part for, for Essendon not be able to change. But this was a side when they smelled blood. They, they totally went after this Essendon side. Um, Probably the most dominant performance that I can remember in the short term. Yeah, I, I think Essendon, the, what we saw of Essendon the last three quarters is what we saw of Essendon the last two games of last year. So that you can't play with an edge and pick and choose. So that'll be that'll be in Essendon's review. Well, they've absolutely belted the Essendon midfield. Now, it, it, minus da Darum, you know, but yeah, Darum, no. Darum's a good young player, he's but I mean, player. he's not, not going to be the difference, though. I don't think so. Uh, Jordy. You can win centre bounds clearance in lots of different ways. The way they won it today, there was a brutality about it. They went bang. Yeah, and I think that, I mean, that was clearly on show, but we just spoke about Horn Francis then. He, he's been the beneficiary, I think, from, from Ollie Wines being out, but it was the outside speed. So it was to suck them in on the inside and then really utilise their strengths on the outside. So Horn Francis, 91% in the midfield. Rosie, 96. He's always high. Butters, 82. But the seven clearances from Horn Francis is the most plenty poor player over the last five years. So he was he was dominant. So you look to the Essendon midfield, you see whether there was a response and, and we and we didn't get it. But how can you defend against that? They had genuine speed across the board. Drew was probably the one that was more defensive. But even this one here, push them on the inside, get them on the outside, and then he curled, and then Butters curls back around to deliver the ball at, at centre half forward. But is that a simple change to say to the Essendon players start on their back and push them in, or but, the way but, they were well, running through the contest that I, wouldn't have worked anyway? Well, I think you're right. I think even if they gave them front position and their ability to to explode through, so there, Horn Francis, he, he gave his back to his direct opponent, but the the route or the route that he was running inside the midfield allowed him to get to open spaces. Thanks to Zero, those magnet, those fantastic labs. I think we also need to acknowledge Ivan Soldo. Who's, yeah, he's fantastic. So you mentioned at the start of the game, he had his work cut out against two genuine ruckman in Goldstein and Draper. I thought he gave him a really good look. Now it's not, it's not armchair service. Not, it's not sorry service right there, but, but he's I put into the area. Yeah, yeah. In the general vicinity and not be dominated against was really mm. significant. Against two significant ruckmen as well. We've spoken a bit flat there, some ruckman tonight. We've yeah. spoken about it periodically about how important it is to be able to break tackles. And Port Adelaide broke Essendon's tackles. Essendon had still had mid sixties. And their pressure was still around 180. So it, it, it was, yeah, bar the last quarter. It was 180 Essence, for the whole game? Yeah, 180 across the game. So bar the last quarter, Essence pressure was okay. 
but yeah. after quarter time, they, they literally I, could not lay a glove. I don't, yeah, this in, is... In terms of a tackle efficiency sense. This is embarrassing, this. This is him looking... Yeah. In the <laughs> end, you, they'll sit down and look at this, and this is Rosie and Butters looking at you going, nah, I'm going straight through. Mm. And that's... That, that's the that arrogance you always yep. talked about, which is great arrogance, but it also it's embarrassing. Well, that's the for opposite an op for an opposition. Of Essendon and Edge, Gary. That's, that's the opposite. That's the edge that's been blunted. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, well, the sharpening tools out this week, I would have thought, Brad Scott. Yeah, that's what, like about the, pre it. the pressure number. The, the pressure number is about, you know, pressure on the opposition. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be an effective tackle for that number to be yeah. high. But that'll be. That's why it needs to be. The numbers are number. Your eye tells you what happened mm -hmm. today, and yeah, that, it wasn't and they there. Got this is a good bounce back, guys. Because remember last, we showed yes. the graphic pre-game. You did, yeah. Uh, where they weren't able to cash in um, yep. from their, you know, their centre bounce dominance, their clearance dominance last week against the D's, and Spot they were beaten by minus twenty. Yeah. Tonight. They hit that on the scoreboard. Look at that, no. centre bounce is 26 points, which is a league average, about 11 points. But that was strong even in, in the first quarter. Without yeah. that centre bounce work, Port Adelaide wouldn't have been as close. That's what I was alluding to last week. Look at that, they are minus 20, and they are plus 15 in clearances. So they've obviously gone to work on that this week. Now Brad Scott's always very measured. He's a professional. I don't think you get too much from him. They were disappointing, Essendon, in, in their lack of... Once it started to go wrong from you pointed it out, Bucks, they didn't have a... Or some other gear to go to, but it was in. It was almost an acceptance, I think, which was my, the most disappointing thing. Watching it unfold, and it was just an acceptance to let it go. Yeah, I, I think it was even wrong. I'd sort of say a, a second option or a plan B. I think that's really easy to say. Hey, the coaches didn't change it. I, I, I thought that the players' effort diminished. I thought it was really high early, and 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 if you've got a if you've got an edge, if you're playing and you and you and you, you know, hanging your hat on this physical brand. It, the scoreboard, they lost their game against Sydney, but I thought they maintained it throughout the whole four quarters. And then they followed it up the next week into this, the first quarter of, of um, the game tonight. But then I thought it diminished. Are we accepting so, of it? That, like, I'm sorry, we're not accepting of it. I don't it, think But do so. we think that this is part of their tr peaks and troughs? It of may side? be. It may be. But you, I don't think you can be a 9 out of 10 all the time. You're going to have your troughs, but you, you, you can't. When you drop off, it's got to get to a 7 out of 10 and stay there as an average, yeah. not drop down to a, to a yeah. 3 or a 4. Which, which it was last week, I thought. Yeah. And they won the game. Yeah. They weren't at their absolute best. And you thought, well, OK, there's a... They just kept plugging away. Again, against not a strength of St Kilda, their midfield. The, the troubling thing for me tonight was when it's a physical thing like leg speed and power, it's hard to change overnight. Yeah, well, with how, our personnel, you've got to change personnel. But how powerful did Essendon look in the first quarter versus Port Adelaide? They, they totally domin dominated them. They're, yeah, they're able to control. Even coming into the game, I'm thinking it, it, it seems like it's more control versus chaos. And I, and I think Essendon got that control in the, in the first quarter, which, al which allowed them to withstand the pressure that Port Adelaide were going to throw at them. But then when, when the game turned to a chaos game, um, you're right, Essendon couldn't match. They still are a young side, so they're, they're going to have yeah. their ups and downs, given that.